All right, today we're going to be doing polar coordinates. I'm going to give you a heads up that there's not going to be any sketching or graph drawing in this video. I'm going to introduce the concept of polar coordinates, how to move from your traditional coordinate system to polar coordinates and back, and the sketching is going to come in the next video. So, enough rambling. What are polar coordinates? Well, first, you have to realize that the system that we've been using for coordinates, which is an XY system, also known as a Cartesian system, is not the only way to label points on a graph. If we have a point 2, 3, we know where that is. We simply go over 2, and we go up 3, and we plot our point on the graph. So that is all fine in a, in a Cartesian system. However, there are other ways to do this, and polar coordinates are a great way of sketching and talking about curves. So polar coordinates are a little bit different because instead of saying an x value and a y value, we give a distance value, which we call the radius r, and we give an angle, theta. That tells us how far away we are from this x-axis, or the starting point, which we're just going to call 0. So, in polar coordinates, instead of ex writing things as x, y, we write it as r theta. So, to give you, I guess, one quick example, if we were to write, okay, um, a point, and we were to say, okay, what is 1 pi over 2, then, well, here's, here's the pi over 2 line, and the distance is about 1, so we would write this like this point right here at 1. And this would be 1 away from the origin. While in xy coordinates, we might write this as 0, 1. So, we're still talking about the exact same point, but we're just using a different coordinate system. So, the question is, how do we convert the two? Well, we have a nice little triangle here, and let's find our cosine, sine, and tangent values. So cosine is going to be x over r, sine is going to be y over r, again, I'm just taking it from the diagram over here to find sine cosine and our tangent will be y over x. And when we want to find r squared, well, we have Pythagoras for that, so we can find x squared plus y squared. So we can solve for our radius and we can solve for our theta. So if we want to go from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates, we have formulas, but what if we want to go from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates? Well, we should probably solve for x and y as well, so that's what we're going to do up top. So we're going to have x is equal to r times cosine of theta, and we're going to have y is equal to r times the sine of theta. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. So we can now convert from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates, and polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. So let's do one example of each. So we have a point 2 pi over 3 in polar coordinates. So of course this means that we have a radius of 2 at a point pi over 3, so it's about there. And that is a distance of 2 of an angle of pi over 3. Okay, so that's what the point would look like. Anyways, let's just erase that. So, what do we do here? I'm going to write out the four formulas we have. x is equal to r times cos theta, y is equal to r times sine of theta, r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, and theta is equal to the arctan of y over x. Here's our formulas. Now let's see what we can do. Polar coordinates. Okay, so x is equal to 
r times cosine of theta, which is going to be 2 times cosine of pi over 3. At this point, we know what cosine of pi over 3 is. That is 1 half, so we have 2 times 1 half, which is going to be equal to 1. Okay, now y is equal to r times sine theta, which of course is 2 times sine of pi over 3, which we know to be 2 times the square root of 3 over 2, which is just going to equal root 3. So this point in Cartesian coordinates is going to become 1 root 3. And this is going to talk about the exact same point. We are just converting the way that we're speaking about the location of that point. Okay, now that we've done that, let's go the opposite way. Let's start with r. So r is going to equal the square root of x squared, which is 1, plus y squared, which is 1. Therefore, r is going to be root 2. Not too bad. Tangent of theta, in fact, we will just write this as tangent of theta is going to be y over x, which will be negative 1 over 1. So the same thing as negative 1. Now, the thing is, where is tan theta equal to negative 1? It's equal to negative 1 in two places. It's going to be negative 1 at 3 pi over 4, as well as 7 pi over 4. Now, how do we know where it is going to be located? At 3 pi over 4 or at 7 pi over 4? Because those both correspond to two completely different points on a graph. Well, this is where we have to take a look at our Cartesian coordinates. So if we plot this, we would have 1 and negative 1. It would be in that spot right there. What do we know about that spot? This is quadrant 4. Therefore, we're going to be dealing with 7 pi over 4. So we can write this coordinate as root 2 and 7 pi over 4. And that is the same way as saying 1, negative 1 in Cartesian coordinates. There you have it. There is an introduction to polar coordinates. And of course, if you don't want to write 7 pi over 4, you can write negative pi over 4. It doesn't matter. The same rule for circles and radians apply, as always. But that is polar coordinates. Next time we will start sketching these things and doing full graphs, and we can see exactly why polar coordinates might be extremely useful when talking about specific graphs. Because they can make some very beautiful graphs that in xy coordinates they would be very, very painful functions to generate. They're possible, but they would be very, very painful without polar coordinates. So I will see you then.